219. Uh, uh, 219 to talk. 219 to talk. 219 to talk. 219 to talk. Let's go. 219. Yeah, 219. Yeah, 219 to talk. 219. 219 to talk. Yeah, you running your mouth. Yeah, you running your mouth. 219 to talk. I was hollering all through. I know y'all heard me. Hollering all through. L- listen, let me bring all this on in. On it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Did you hear me just? I was. Did you hear me all in that intro? No, I missed that. Oh, yeah, I was over here just loud, realized that I was not muted. I said, look at that. <laughs> so I, just, I am <laughs> live, <laughs> live at seven. Yes, oh, ma'am. Seven so come on, and here we are. Come on, Onis. How has your day been? Well, listen, because you know we're going to get into it. Thanksgiving, holidays, all of that good, good stuff with today. How has your day been? My day has been blessed regardless of what I'm going through. My declare blessings and favor from the Lord. Just sitting here promoting my businesses, trying to make it do what it does. But all in all, today was a blessed day. Listen, since you're talking about promoting your business, we got time. Let's talk about your business. Tell us what you do. Well, I am a logistical specialist, a.k.a. dispatcher, truck Mm -hmm. dispatcher. So now I have moved from truck dispatching, which, you know, I'm still doing that. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I'm teaching. I'm 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 instructing. I'm, I'm I'm giving classes now, so I'm trying to um, just 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 out here trying to put it out here, you know, uh, to start training some people. So when the industry becomes more open, you know, mm-hmm. the supply chain situation we got, and it becomes more open that people can recognize that this is an area that you can get into for very little money, be very Mm -hmm. productive. You put the work in and it'll work for you. Um, So that's, that's what I'm doing. And then, you know, tax season is coming up. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I'm just, just trying to make, just trying to, you know, kick in that entrepreneurial spirit. Somebody told me, you know, that that, that God was going to make a way for me, and, and I believe mm-hmm. in the person who said it. And uh, But I know that faith without works is Look. dead, so I'm telling you, I'm working my faith. I'm worth faith. <laughs> Come on now. I know that's right. I know. Hey, and if you, what this song, you, what this song says, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. <laughs> yes. You have to believe yes, in every yourself. Day. You have to believe Let in yourself. Let me tell you what I found uh-huh. on YouTube that has truly blessed me. And uh-huh. you know, we we talk about prayer and meditation. Um I I come across it's, it's called prayer meditation on YouTube and it comes across, you know, it's just got some 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 meditations for you to go to sleep, meditations when you wake up in the morning, some meditations to listen to during the day. And and it's and one thing that was said is said that when we pray, you know, don't pray for an hour. Pray uh-huh. for five uh-huh. minutes and then see what God got to say. Yeah. You know. Oh we go come on. Him, you know, it's just like I'm coming to you, I'm asking for your advice, but I'm talking so much till you can't say nothing, 
you know, you just listening to me, you never get a chance to say anything. But, you know, if we listen and truly hear what God has to say and what is that what does that entail? That's turning off the TV, turning off the music, and just sitting quietly waiting on God to say something. You know, hey, God, man. I'm here. I'm here. You know, what 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 do you have to tell me today? What directions do you have for me today? I'm listening. And just sit there and be quiet. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. we miss step. We ask God to lead God and direct our path, but we miss because we don't talk too much, you know. Mm-hmm. When they say talk once, listen twice. So, come on, come yeah. On. So that's that's you know that's what I'm 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 just in that place where you know, hey, I'm I'm listening. You know, I'm here. I'm here. I'm available. Talk to me. What the guys say? And I did that today, and I'm learning to do that more often. Is mm-hmm. to turn everything off and just. You know, maybe like have a little bit of, you know, smooth listening music going. And sometimes I just sit here in silence, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how's things going for you on this this, this uh, 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 holiday season that we have upon us? It's going good. You know, I, um, you know, being a leader, you know, being in the, you know, being being a uh, <laughs> being a uh, a leader is, you know, God talks to you a lot and God shows you a lot of different things. And sometimes, what's up, JD? Hey, hey, what's going on, y'all? <laughs> well, what's up, JD? Talking about, talking about our day. Um, just that today, I just I had to work overnight last night. And, um, which was the first for me in a long time. And so, uh, when I came home, I fell out, you know, and then God was dealing with me, dealing with me a lot with the different things that he wants me to do, you know, and uh, sometimes I get bombarded, uh, with thoughts because the enemy, when God is, is telling you things to do and, and giving you instruction, the enemy likes to, like you said, you got to turn off the TV, you got to... <laughs> off the phone, you know, look, turn the ringer yeah. off and, and just allow God to just talk to you, uh, make sense of some things in your life. So today for me has been uh, one of those days. Rest, listening to the voice of God, where, what he wants me to do, what he, you know, where he wants me to go, who, and this is a major one, who he wants me to stop dealing with. <laughs> Come my on God. now. Oh my God. Now 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 you know when God gets the point out for oh, listen, because I'm gonna tell you something that the Lord told me he was gonna show me in this holiday seat. He said he was gonna show me who's for me, against me, and who's just dead weight. You know, they just <laughs> they not for against they just dead weight. <laughs> so so that's where I am in my mind right now. Then I you know and also dealing with people who who don't respect the call on my life. They handle me in a very childish way. And I watch people, you know, I listen to people. I know who they are, you know. Mm-hmm. So said, nope. He just, he'll give it an expiration, ex, uh, expiration date. You know, he'll give their presence in your life an expiration date, and you got to go ahead and let them go. What's going on? What's going on, trainer, right? Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm just sitting back chilling, you know what I'm saying? Just got back on. You know, what's going on down in the dirty Houston? <laughs> the dirty Look, the same thing, same thing. JT, I'm excited. Hey. Look, I'm excited because I, you, listen, when we were not excited on. excited to put that tree up. Don't start on that Christmas tree. I have not got in that spirit yet. I don't know where it is. I don't know if I. I don't know if I dumped it out in the middle of the street. I don't know where it well, is. You better, you better get to listening to some jingle bells or some uh, night before Christmas or something. Some <laughs> uh, some temptations. I mean, whatever. You know, it ain't Christmas just, until you hear that temptation song one time. Oh, I like the temptations. They could, they that could, they you know could it's a out Christmas. all the rest 
come, but they can play the Temptations 50, 11 times till wow. December 25th. You know, <laughs> I'm good with that. Ain't nothing like no, that Temptations. Have you put your... You, you hear that in my mind. Oh, you hear that? That's it. It's Timber, man. It's Timber time once okay. you hear that. Okay. Be, okay, so since you getting on me about the tree, Ray, Onis, have y'all put a tree up yet? I don't do Christmas like that. Oh, boom. <laughs> boom. I ain't, I ain't even put up no tree. Ain't nobody, no, I ain't put no, I don't never put up a tree. No. Um, boom. That's a discussion probably for a whole nother Monday it night, is. but uh, no. I I'm 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 not into uh I don't believe in Christmas like that. Now, do I believe in the birth of Christ? Yes, I do. But uh as my apostle, wonderful Ryan say, how you going to have a how am I going to invite you to my birthday party and you come celebrate a little fat white man in a red suit? <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of people are not putting a tree up. A lot of people are, you know, and uh, because people have begin to worship gifts and, you know, they make it all about gifts and all that. Commercial. Kind of stuff. It's too commercialized. Well, you have to so understand that. Part, that but, um... we, don't, we don't celebrate. I truly celebrate the birth of Christ because without him, you know, without his birth, there would be no death in order to save us, you know. So he had mm-hmm. to come. We had to cel- we have to celebrate, you know, the Savior. Well, we have to understand that <laughs> but Christmas, I don't do Santa Christmas, Claus. Yeah, Christmas has Santa become a, 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 a commerce holiday. You know, a, yeah. a, 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 a capitalism, capitalism type holiday. It's, it, it's you know, it's retailers that stock up the whole year just for Christmas. You know, they 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 know that that's going to be their big season. Because let's just be honest, we 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 uh, celebrate Christmas by going broke for people that we don't even really care about, and they, hey, they ain't going to do nothing. Ain't ain't going ain't going to do nothing for us no how. So we'll end up going in debt for nothing to start the year off messed up. Then what my and what my mama say? You got to eat tomorrow. Uh, uh, yeah. So many people, so many people depressed. Oh, they they got anxiety. Some of them won't show up at the family gathering because they don't have no gift at hand. You know. Yeah. And I used to be like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, a lot I, of people I, you know, are like that because, and, and you know, and that's sad. That's that's not what the birth of Christ is about. He came exactly. to give, to give. You you understand? So. If if we're celebrating the true meaning of Christmas, I I can't show up at your house because you know, hey, it was a rough year for me, and I don't have anything to give but love. Exactly, and, and, so, and a potato pie, so and a family, potato pie. Let, That's all I let's have. Let's let's just be honest. Some of these families need some discussions and some and some forgiveness uh, ceremonies anyway, instead of passing our gifts. They need to pass oh. need to pass out apologies. Okay, how you feel about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, society, you know, society, society has gotten stuck on buying gifts. Everybody got to have a gift because I know somebody that makes sure that my kids got to have twenty and fifty presents a piece. That's the problem right there. So you yeah. know, and then. Some of these people get gifts and they're not appreciative. They don't really like the fact, you know, like uh, for an example, I know this lady, her son, she bought her son all kind of clothes and, you know, big gifts and stuff. And then after a day, you know, the day of or the day after Christmas, he tells her, uh, Mama, uh, I love you and I love everything you do for me, but but I don't like none of them clothes you bought me because don't nobody else uh, wear those clothes. I told him I would have uh, took them clothes back, and he wouldn't have got nothing. And he yeah, had to wear what he had last naked. year. But naked with his squeezy. Hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on, man. You know, I with uh, with my mom. I'm tell y'all the truth. We came up in a household with eight children. Okay, you were getting a Bible. You were getting you was look some board games. You were getting some underwear. 
You wasn't getting nothing expensive. That's not we, we didn't experience that type of uh you know, you was gonna read the word of God. You <laughs> you was gonna read some scriptures. Yes, for Christmas. That's what you was gonna do. I remember one Christmas now they did they did go out and get us some gifts or whatever. You know, because I guess my daddy really stressed that he wanted to get us some gifts. But the other Christmases, I remember my mama rolled in a huge box. I'm thinking we got some toys in there. We got all this. It was socks and underwear. <laughs> she had did that whole uh, layaway at Kmart. And when she rolled that box. Damn, the blue light special. Then what about the blue light special, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blue light special at Kmart. Mhm. Mhm. Look, we wanted to build the blue, blue light special. That blue light went off. You went over there and got you some drawers for a dollar. Huh? And bring off fifty cent underwear. <laughs> yeah, fifty cent socks. Yeah, we, we you stock up when that when that blue light go off. Yeah. If you want well, some clean drawers, you better run over there. Well, I and hope they got this side. Uh, my mama didn't play. Listen, she can't. When I say she rolled a box in there that was big enough for a refrigerator to fit in, my God. Yeah. I said she was serious about these underwear. Because when you got eight kids, you ain't not that trying to buy expensive stuff. You got to get yeah, something. Nope. Where you go, go. Look, and then my dad is sitting there looking. So I figured it out when I got older. He had gave her money to get Christmas gifts. He had no idea she was going to go and get nothing but underwear and socks. He just... Uh. Yeah, you know, and they weren't gonna argue in front of us. So, <laughs> so she got well, one thing you can say, one thing you can say about that is they didn't go to waste. Exactly. exactly. They didn't. <laughs> and I, I, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, ain't, ain't nothing like new socks and drawers. You feel your whole body feel brand new when you put on new socks and drawers. Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> out the bed. oh man! Oh, the that's, a, that's a that's a blessed day, man. Huh? Somebody asked somebody asked me somebody asked me the other day. You got a whole different you got a whole for? different strut. You got a whole different strut when that's you got it. a new pair of drawers on and some new socks. What you say, Ray? Some somebody asked me the other day, "What you want for Christmas?" I said, "You can bring me some socks and a t-shirt and an underwear. I don't care nothing about it." I don't need nothing special. Just bring me some underwear and some socks and some t-shirts. I'm with it. Hmm. Well, let's I know be honest. I, I know that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ona. Based, based upon what we've gone through, let's just say the past two years, what mm. is really important to you? Life should be so much more than a Christmas gift at this point in time. You know, mm-hmm. we we possibly could be facing another crisis, you know, yep. bigger than the last two, you know, yep. um, that that we've been through. So, I I mean, diamonds and pearls, you know, that that'd be nice to have. All the nice stuff would be nice to have. But what I mean, what what is more important to you? Life, the vaccination family, cards, love, health, <laughs> the vaccination mind, cards is important you know. as well. I need, I need to see your vaccination card. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, with the booster, I, I agree. with the booster on it. Okay, JD, I agree with you on this. You know, I think that uh, COVID, uh, coupled with uh, some other things, have brought us, have brought a lot of people. A lot of adults, let me say adults, to a different place uh, in their heart and their mind when it comes to the holidays. Most people are thinking more about, uh, like in New York and places like that, they were really quarantined, you know. So this is like the first, uh, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, the first time they get to see some of their family members face to face, you know. So. I agree, you know, it's just we need to just, we need to really just, uh, like the, like uh, Glory said in the 7 Up program, grow up. We really need to really grow up and really, um, you know, focus on what this life is really about, you know. We take for granted relationships with our, with our elders, with our grandmothers and our grandfathers. We take for granted our relationships with our children. We take for granted all of these different things, you know. So, 
for the holidays, why don't people get back to uh, family and how you doing and what's going on in your life and you know what I'm saying? Really checking in on one another. You know what? People people have gotten away from that anyway because more people are prone to meet for a funeral than they are for a family reunion. Tell the truth. All right. Tell the truth. And that's bad. Yeah. And that's bad because people get together all the time. As soon as something happens, somebody die, everybody wanna come around. But the whole yeah. time they've been living, won't nobody even show up, don't nobody wanna visit. Most it's of them don't even show up. Right. It's not right. right. I uh gave my oldest sister we gave her a seventy birthday party. And mm-hmm. we stress, you know, the family coming, let's make this a, a like a family reunion. Everybody had an excuse. Oh my goodness, right. I know about that. <laughs> we told them two months, two, three months in advance. Hmm. And it's not like they had no long way to go. They was just coming from Dallas. Some had to come from Pampa, Amarillo, eight hours, you know. Not a long hey, come, you know, come for the weekend, you know, let's celebrate the oldest, you know, cousin in the family, you know. Mm-hmm. And that, but, you know, let somebody die, just like you say. You know, they'll book a ticket, you know, pawn <laughs> stuff, everything else to come to a funeral. And I don't understand. I really don't love me while I live. A lot of people ain't at the funeral though, on this for the, they there to show off. They there to show talk about how how their kids made it. They they there to to uh to look at other people and see how low they've got. You know, it's people got motives behind some of the stuff that they do. And I'm and just like like you was talking about your sister's birthday party. I just went through this whole amazing time in my life and ministry and all of that, and none of my family showed up. You know, my daughter showed up, none of my family, you know, and uh, sad. It was just really, really sad, you know, that we as a, as a community and culture are like that, like, like, uh, like right, say, oh, but if, but if somebody die, oh, they pulling out their best clothes, you know, they finna rent a car because <laughs> they finna look, I just, I don't know. Now, when they come to visit for that funeral, most of them come to see what they can get. Oh my God! Don't go and don't take me. Don't take me there. They look. When I went through being a widow, my cousin, I ain't gonna call him out. I ain't gonna say his name. Was waiting there at, to ask me for some insurance money. Some of the insurance money. Somebody else turned around and asked me for five hundred dollars. You know, stuck around for a couple of days till I till it looked like I wasn't gonna cry no more, and then asked me for five hundred dollars. What? And oh yeah, then the house was empty. You know, and you know when the real grieving happened, the house empty. You can't find nobody. Everybody busy. You know, but everybody wanna tell you what to do with insurance. Like that's why. Look, I'm telling you. You know. People, people don't. They yeah, don't let me, have. Let me let me tell you something. My, my wife, my wife will tell you, uh, Ray and Onis. She, I, I'll be on Facebook and I will see somebody and I will be, like, oh yeah, that's my cousin. My wife be like, I, I ain't never met them. I said, you ain't gonna meet them because I don't <laughs> fool with them riding or walking. Look here, let me tell you something about family. They, they the closest one to you and they the quickest one to get you. So I, 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 I look, it's, it's something that I, I, I feed with a long handle spoon. Hmm. I, I, I see them uh, seldom and never. <laughs> the only two times I want to see them, seldom and never. Okay, I'm going to switch up this topic. I'm going to switch up this topic, okay? Um, <laughs> all right, Onis. You know, I've been waiting since I got off the phone with you earlier. We wanted to talk about a certain topic, so uh, go ahead, get us started. Well, you know, <clears throat> as me as and 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 I assume, which I probably should never assume, that every other person of color in America has been looking at the news and uh, the verdict that. 
came down last week, uh, guilty, guilty, guilty. Mm. But mm. what was more shocking to me more than anything was when they played out the video uh, in court of uh, Ahmaud Arbery, how they basically murdered a young Mm. black man in the streets because, as the prosecutor said, he was a black man running through a white neighborhood. Wow. Well, hold on. You forgot the part about you forgot the part about the white lady saying that he had on khaki shorts, no socks, and, uh-huh. and tennis shoes stuffing up his right. long toenails. His dirty. She said yes, dirty yeah. toenails. Oh, yeah. Long but, dirty but toenails. Was, but in addition to that, every like to defender. Say, that she said that every defender. And I know once you take on a case, you do have to defend this person to the best of your ability. They actually believed mm. that these men were innocent. Yeah, within their rights. Yeah, within their rights. They one one even had a problem with Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson sitting out in 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 the audience. Oh yeah, yeah, and and look when they did that, a hundred a hundred and some black ministers showed up the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, since you got a problem with this too, these two, yeah, let's just flood this. Let's just, let's just you yeah, know they did. show up completely, but. My thing was uh, 11 white jurors and one black one. Yep. Mm. Mm. Do it. you honestly <laughs> believe that they gave that verdict because, number one, they believed it? Mm. Or they were just trying to hold down racial unrest? That is you know, the question. To be, honest, to be honest with your owners, I don't care why they did it, yeah. as long as they did it. Because let me tell you why I say that. Because it, it's it's time for white folks to get scared of. We we've been too timid. Uh, you know, all that marching ain't got us nothing but beat up. Oh no! All that marching and slanging and we shall overcome. Look here. It ain't got us nothing but beat up and, and miss you. So I hope they scared us now. To a certain extent. I don't want to be so scared they're gunning us down, though, the, the laws. But I'm just saying, they, they, they need to be kind of fearful of what the what the repercussions will be for messing over black folks. Well, and I hear you, but the reason I ask the question is I ask it. Because if you truly believe they were guilty, okay, that's fine, because we knew they were guilty. But if the defender did not believe they were guilty or he was just defending his client or he, you know, let's just say for woo-hoo reasons, he did not present his case in a manner that they could have found them guilty, Either you found them guilty or you were just avoiding racial unrest because the next time, the next jury may not care about social unrest. Mm -hmm. They're going to let their true colors show, find them not guilty. We know that Zimmerman was guilty in the case of Trayvon Martin. Right, and they found him innocent in the court of law, but his life has gone downhill ever since. Mm -hmm. Yep, Yep. that's true. Yeah, amen. We'll get that. That's because we serve a a mighty God who 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 fights our battles for us. But everybody. It, honestly, everybody needs to get prepared for what's about to happen because I'm going to tell you something. With that guilty verdict on that case, those were not the only 
guys in their neighborhood that's prejudiced. Okay? They think oh, that they saw, they think that they saw an uprising when uh when uh everything happened with George Floyd and, and, and you know, a couple of other things. But I'm telling you right now, them folks they seem they watching watching uh these white men go to jail. Come on. Come on, and they white men that said, oh, why was he able to call these other white men? Yeah, he running, man, uh, and they get in their trucks. Come on. It has to be something. It has to be some type of uh, confidence behind that, you know, because if, oh, if, yeah, you know. if this wasn't already happening, if this wasn't already happening, they the other guy would have been like, man, I don't know. You know, they would have been more thinking about their families or whatever. But this is well, they has have, been they have, this that, is, that white neighborhood got a mob mentality. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that white neighborhood got a mob mentality. So that that that's yeah, what they have to they, do. They, they, they show Ahmad on camera. Basically, I mean, you know, he might have just want to been going in there looking at how they was building the house. Oh, this is nice. Oh, look at the progress that they made on this house. He wasn't doing anything. He wasn't bothering anything. As the other people who were going in the house and the man who owned the house said, he never took nothing. He never disturbed nothing. He just probably a point of rest and to run off. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but you know what? But but let's look at to the fact that they said many people had walked in there, walked in their yes, house. Ma'am. Many have had walked in their house. I promise you, when he that day that he walked in that house, them white men were already on a whole way. They yes. were already in a mindset. Because there's no way you could see that. Because he said they we saw him on the camera, but you saw other people on the camera that you didn't chase down. You know, that's right. So, so I, it's like I always tell James when people come talking to you and they are and they already hype and got an attitude, it's because that's the continuation of a, a conversation they were already having. When somebody come and they going at you, they were that's what they were talking mm. about with somebody else. You know, so what what he ran into, what he ran into, it was it was. It was during the time where they were already saying we gon' we need to uh uh we don't like what's going on. They probably was talking about a conversation with George Floyd, all of that. Cause that man stood there, uh, he stood there and talked to the police with all that blood all over his hands, like it wasn't. Nothing. Oh my god! Like he had killed, disturbing. like he had, like he had killed a chicken or something. Like his son had had oh. just shot a dog in the street. He was standing there like it was no big deal. With this boy's blood all all, all over his him. Yep. All over him. That was chilling. Do you know how chilling I'm that is? I'm telling you. But the I'm whole semblance you. of it. His yeah. blood is on your hand. Yeah. And, and we have and to that really. Was, I, that thought never, probably never caught thought. And who was looking at that to say he just scratching his head and you know just just doing whatever he ain't even thought about this boy's blood is all over him. Let me let me tell you you know you know honest I, my father used to hunt deer right he hunt yeah. deer and uh, when when they finished hunting deer they they be at the back of the house around the smokehouse they be getting ready to 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 clean the deer, right? Gut the deer, all this kind of stuff. And they, they, the the conversations that hunters have. Let me say that the conversations that hunters have, they talk about how the deer ran, right? They talk about how uh-huh. the how the how the deer thought that he was gone. You know, we saw him run up through there, and, and so we went around the back. You know, when they were talking about this young man, that's how they talked about him, like they were hunting. Yes. Yeah. They talked about, oh, he ran around. He ran through the houses. He ran through the neighborhood. But we, we got him. We got him. We came up the street. You know? Yeah. I like, wow. I said, if we can't really see what that is, then we in trouble. You know? If we don't yeah. really, really see what really happened right there, they thought because that, because that, it's like, 
slavery and just like when when uh when somebody fled or they said there was a runaway slave that's how they did them get, get everybody suited up get your get Come your on. get your your gun your net your you know whatever your horse yeah. saddle up your horses you know yeah we're going hunting hunting oh, Oh, I'm gonna say it like they said. We're gonna hunt, we're gonna hang a nigga today. That's what they say. That's, that's it. <laughs> and we're gonna hang him where everybody could understand, you know, or, or, or to see what happens to a runaway, you know. So, what do you think about the guy that actually took the video? Because his video was they didn't show it all on TV. What I mm-hmm. watched was 48 Hours, mm-hmm. and and you know they showed they got a little bit more in depth, you know, uh showing what actually happened on this video. This man sit there with the video with his camp with his phone. Mm, mm, mm. And, and video he watched oh. this man shoot this boy three but that's what, times. But that's what I'm telling you. That's what hunters do. That's what hunters do. These men, I promise you, if they go really thoroughly into their background, you'll find out that they have played them games where they hunting. You know, where 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 man video this, man record this, this right here. You know, they this, well, that, he, did he didn't he didn't stand there when he was when that man was talking. He wasn't standing there like he was, he had killed somebody. He had no he wasn't shaking. He wasn't uh he wasn't second guessing himself. When he Mm-mm. left out his house, when he left out his house, he left out his, him and his son, they left out to shoot him. They left out to kill him. And the other man I, I, I just didn't I you know, I just like okay, for you to sit there with your camera and film this man get being killed. And then mm. make him out to be a monster, to make this young mm. man out to be a monster, and he's running for his life. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's just understand that the one who was filming also mm. cut him off with his truck, so he couldn't run the other way. Wow! Come on, Lord have mercy. Y'all didn't hear that part? Yeah, yeah he, he, I remember he, that. He, I remember he that. He cut him off. He cut him off and redirected him, so he couldn't run the opposite direction. Sure That's why he's being charged with murder too, because he was a participant. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one of the who they called who didn't show up. My lord. Right. My lord. But you know what? Like he said, actually you... thought at the time with the Georgia law. You know what was the law? Uh, citizens arrest or yeah. yeah, they felt out confident. Yeah. Then uh-huh. he was going to get away with it. Because they let him get away. He probably got away with it before. Because he knew he, he knows ex- everybody. He military and a uh, uh, law enforcement no, no, officer. The, 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 son, the son was ex-Coast uh, Guard. And the uh, father was ex-police. Wow. Yeah, but the, look, the daddy, I, I, was reading about, I was reading about the daddy, right? The daddy had been disciplined about eleven times in the last eight years. What? Of his career. Yeah, he been he they done took his gun and his badge from him before and put him on desk duty several times. Wow. Before he finally just went on to retire. Wow. But he been he been called out several times for aggressive behavior and, and uh uh excessive force on, on while he while he was uh performing his duties as a police officer. Wow. So he stayed in trouble already. Mm. Yeah, so they, mm. they they just kept him on the force until he finally went on and retired with his pension. What they call him them they call him them good old boys. That's some good old boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and look, that that you you know you know the guy who uh the, the district attorney who brought the charges up on him mm-hmm. was the fourth the, the fourth district attorney that they assigned to that thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the first one, the first one, the uh, the the police officer, he he wasn't gonna even arrest nobody because him and the police officer were good buddies. Mm. Then he recruit he he uh, removed himself, and then somebody else came in, 
and, and then they put a little pressure on her. She took herself <laughs> off of it. Then somebody mm-hmm. hit the yeah. That was the fourth district attorney that before they uh, brought charges up. And the only reason the charges was brought up 90 something days later was because the video leaked. Mm. If that mm. video hadn't leaked, we'd have never heard about this case. Mm. Lord have mercy. We're talking about almost, almost four months had to pass before they made an arrest. Wow. Mm. Mm. Nine, 90. I think it was 96 or 97 days in past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I wow. said, the only reason, only reason they brought up charges is because that video came out. There was so much pressure from the outside public to bring charges up on them. That's why that, that fourth district attorney finally went ahead and um, charged them people and arrested them. And, can we, just, and well, can, we just, can we just flat out say that 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 he almost got away with it. Can we can we just seriously flat out say that with the neighborhood that he lived in and all those all the people he was connected to, he almost got away with it. If that video hadn't come out and went public and went viral, he, he would have got away with it. Nobody would ever got that. arrested for that. For that. But they finna get whooped. They finna get whooped now. <laughs> He's been here for minute. He's just been another dead 25-year-old boy boy got killed. Oh, yeah. They, they, Let's they understand. They're so probably this, this, looking all calm and stuff, but I tell you what, I know on the inside, they see like the other little 18-year-old, he let all his emotions show. They didn't let any emotions show, but I know right. the insides had to have been jealous. Had mm-hmm. to have been jealous. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, them dudes watch, them dudes watch the news. Them dudes watch the news just like anybody else. Them dudes watch the news just like anybody else. They wait yeah, on them. They always sitting at the gate. Mm-hmm. No, I have no idea. Just like you the one that they get the one. They're going to get recruited, though, so they get in there. They're going to get recruited, so it don't matter. Yeah, they're going to yeah. Aryan Nation. Yep, they're going to protect <laughs> them when they walk in the door. Aryan Nation and, and protect Come on, buddy. You kill one of them jiggaboos. Come on over you here with us, buddy. You kill one of them. Yeah. <laughs> what they going to do? What they going to do? You kill one of them jiggaboos. Come on over here. Don't cut the hell yep. on out. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think this this my thing about, and and I I don't know if y'all talked about this before, but if, if people if if blacks are gonna stick together, they need to stick together all the time, oh, and need to protest on. a lot of things because I don't know if y'all heard about the incident with the guy, the 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 guy that raped four teenagers and got the eight years probation. No. Oh, yeah. What? I missed yeah. That. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a white guy. His name is uh it was on the news. His name is uh well he's from Louisville Lewiston Tech Louisville Lewiston, New York. But he raped four teenagers and got eight years probation. Lord have mercy. The judge gave him eight years probation. Lord have mercy. But see, that's my thing about protest. If y'all gonna protest something, they should be protesting that because if that was a black guy that raped four teenagers, oh, they'd have had his head. He's already been you on court, it. he's already been going to jail. He'd have been in jail no. waiting trial, and yep. they'd have been trying to hang him already. But this white boy, because they said he was connected. His mom and daddy got money. Mm-mm. So they felt that, you know, with him having money, the judge even made a comment. The judge said, uh, matter of fact, let me read his statement. The judge said, uh, through treatment and reflection, I've come to feel deep shame and regret for my – no, no, not him. My bad. Uh he made a comment about he was talking about uh, he know that people are upset about what happened and how things happened, blah 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 blah. But he feel that he shouldn't it's not gonna help him if he go to jail for these rapes, so I'm just gonna give him eight years probation. Oh my god. What? Oh my yep. god. He raped four teenagers and got eight years probation. She is different. Oh my but now god. mind you, after this ain't nobody opened their mouth. Ain't no black opening their mouth because even though it didn't happen to blacks, but see the thing is, if a black had done it, it'd have been a mm-hmm. whole issue. It'd have been all over the news every day. I've only heard about that issue like once or twice since it's been on the news. I ain't heard about it since. So mm-hmm. I just pulled it up again online though. I just pulled it up again online. All I typed in was boy get eight years probation and it popped right up. 
Wow. But um, he got eight years probation for raping four teenagers. Jesus. He don't get no jail time. He gets nothing. He don't go. Um, he got you know he got assigned up as a sex offender and all that, but um, he was like um. I agonize. I'm not ashamed to say that I actually prayed over what is appropriate sentence in this case because there was great pain, there was great harm. There were multiple crimes committed in this case. Judge Murphy explained, it seems to me that a sentence that involves incarceration or partial incarceration isn't appropriate. So I am going to sentence you to probation. My Lord. My Lord. But you know what? He's exactly right because look at Red and How. The only reason that there wasn't a big mess behind that, or you know, they had called the, the National Guardian, the the men that he killed were white. Yeah, you're right. But now, but now look at this. Now, I just saw an article earlier that they trying to get the Supreme Court to re give Bill Cosby his sentence to reconvict him. Yes, I think what. That. Yeah, yep. they trying to get oh, him. They trying to get the Supreme Court to to issue back his, give him back his conviction. So this man did something years ago that you still 100 percent ain't proved. But you got this yeah. man that just committed four four sexual crimes against the teenagers, against four teenagers. But you want to give him probation, but you're trying to pursue an issue about an old man that's 80 some, almost 90 years old. You trying to get him back under this conviction because you felt it wasn't right. But ain't wow. nobody saying nothing else about this white boy that kidnapped that uh that raped these teenagers. See, that's the kind of stuff I be looking at because we sitting out here worried about this and that. But you trying to lock Bill Cosby back up, but you ain't worried about this white boy that just raped four teenagers. Bill and Cosby that's was done right years it. ago, and you still ain't got no proof of it. You just got people's word of mouth. That's really and truly his hearsay. Is he says he said. Well, everybody. But knows here you got this guy that admitted, huh? You know, everybody, look, them, 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 uh, <laughs> and I'm going to say it just like this. Them white folks was after Bill Cosby anyway. Bill Cosby yeah. had too much, Bill Cosby he got had too much, too money. much money. He had too much too money. Much influence. And Bill, and Bill mm-hmm. Cosby, Bill Cosby stepped out of what the white folks was telling him to do. He stopped obeying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Cosby realized how much power he had and so did them white people. And they said, no, no, That's sir. Right. And they start coming out. What they say with receipts. And look. Oh, and I, I pay on. Do y'all do y'all do y'all recall? Do y'all recall what what happened to to cause this with Bill Cosby? Do y'all do y'all know what, what triggered all that with Bill Cosby? He tried to get a TV show. Well, no, no. Let me tell you what, he, what happened. The 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 TV station, the broadcast network, NBC was going to sell itself. It was going to sell NBC. Mm-hmm. Bill Cosby came up with the money that they wanted to sell NBC. Soon mm-hmm. as NBC ah. found out it was, soon as NBC found out Bill Cosby was about to buy them, they upped the price. And what happened was when he upped the price, Bill Cosby went and got himself. I think he got uh, Denzel, Spike Lee, I think Ice Cube and a couple of other uh, black um, uh, black uh, movie stars and stuff. He got all of them together, and they was going to buy NBC. They came up with the new price, and NBC took themselves off the market and said, never mind, we're not selling. Mm-hmm. Wow. And right after that is when all, when all the problems started happening for Bill Cosby. Do you understand yeah. these white folks know what will happen? If black people ever got control of a national broadcast station mm. like ABC, CBS, or NBC, mm. and control, yeah, because it, it'd, it'd be called it'd be called the new black channel. Exactly, <laughs> and can control the media that's put out <laughs> and the perceptions of black folks that's put out. They can control it. Yeah, oh, no, they, they, the white folks not gonna have that. Yeah, that's what that's what yeah. that's what prompted all that stuff with Bill Cosby. Yeah, it was they all about the TV You have to understand something. Bill Cosby been making money since the Fat Album show. <laughs> <laughs> See, and the thing about the Fat Album show that a lot of people don't know is 
Bill Cosby made all the money off that show because Bill Cosby did everything on that show. He, yep. he voiced almost every character. He rarely had somebody else come in and do characters. All the artwork, everything was Bill Cosby. Yeah, he made all the money off that show. And then you got to understand all the movies that Bill Cosby was in in, in the 60s and 70s. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah all the, See, all when they the realized he got night, he, yeah, all, all he them, like all them, uh, They didn't like that. Yeah. Bill, oh, man, yeah, look yeah, here. Bill made yeah. some money in Hollywood, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Not only had Bill and had so many platinum albums, you know, co- uh, comedy albums, man, Bill has made some money, brother. And the white folks love Bill. And they was buying his stuff. But like my wife say, Bill got out of line and, and wasn't obeying no more. Hey, but let's yep. be real. Let's be real. Yep. Just, look, look, all this stuff that that, and see, this is why I, I I pray for our black men because R. Kelly, with all this stuff he was doing, the reason them folks didn't stop him, yeah, it was because of, of the money, but they also wanted something to hold it. They all, it's just like when you see them singers and these and these these famous acts, you know, and they and they fall to drugs. Oh, they'll bring them the drugs. They'll bring them the girls. They'll bring them they and and and. Or like uh, what did say? Um, oh, what's that? Cadillac Records, where they paying them in cars. <laughs> and always a setup. That's why I often tell people you need to write your own money. You need to know your, you know, what's in your bank account. You need to know what's going out, what's coming in. You need to be careful about who you partner up with. But hey. That glitz and glamour and fame and all that kind of stuff. You get in there and you you happy they accepted you and, and you done accepted all kinds of gifts and trinkets. And once you do a power move, here they come with all them receipts, with all that. That is, that is. Mhm. That yep. is. Gotta be careful. I'd be like, look. Yeah, a lot of people a lot of people don't know this, but that's what happened with uh what's his name too? Tupac. Mm-hmm. Tupac didn't own nothing. His mama found it out after he died. Everything Tupac had, the record label actually owned it. Wow. Oh, that's a discussion for a whole nother day. Yes, yeah, because you know nothing. they talked about it in the forties and the fifties, you know how uh, was it Cadillac Records, how they did, you know, mm-hmm. black people's know. music, and then you come with uh, the black-owned producers, directors, you know, music, mm-hmm. you know, uh, moguls or whatever, and you do you turn around and do your own people like that, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mm-hmm. sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be making all that what? money, all them child, all them child stars that was in the house, and then they turn around and, and the, the execs got all their money. We when we watched yeah. uh, about when we watched about NWA and uh, and that stuff that that uh, that Q and Island was going through with with the person that was what was it I don't even remember his name but the way they was doing yeah, him, yeah. I, yeah then I Q may say hold up where is my money <laughs> you know, that is stop playing with me yeah, where is my money <laughs> so oh yeah we got that's why he moved around that. that's right yeah. We got in a good conversation. We got like five minutes left in the show. I have enjoyed myself on the show today. Okay, so we're going to start with Onis. And Onis, go ahead and sign off for us tonight. Truly enjoy myself tonight. Peace and blessings, you know, uh, to each and every one of you on this up and coming holiday season. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it true. As they say on the radio, let's keep it 100. Um, I think we solved a lot of the uh, world problems here tonight if they would have just been <laughs> here to listen to us. But, you know, yet and still, we're going to keep put some prayer on it and we're going to keep on looking to, to the Lord, you know, for health and guidance. And, you know, y'all have a great week. Look forward to seeing you back here next week. Peace and blessings. All right, all right. All right, Ray. Right. Go ahead and sign out for us. All right, all right. This train of Ray down dirty ship, getting ready to start a new pow- uh, 
Black Black Panther movement. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, but we needed it right here. But no, uh, yeah, uh, Ray down here in the dirty south. Just trying to let y'all know to come on out and join us again at 219 to talk. Also, join me on Saturdays at 2 o'clock. Every Saturday at 2 o'clock to talk about fitness. Any fitness question you may have or comments you may have, come see me. Come talk to me on Saturdays at 2 o'clock. Y'all have a blessed one. All right, J.D. All right. All right, all right. It's your boy, J.D., J.D. the Barber, down here in South Park, Texas, home of the uh, – <laughs> free and land of the break, whatever they call it. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, 219 to talk, man, we, we do dive into some conversations that will run off on us in a minute. But uh, <laughs> we gave out some good information, and it was a wonderful talk tonight, and I appreciate, I appreciate y'all tuning in and hope to see y'all next week. Have a good week. All right, this is Queenie, and I'm coming on in just a few minutes with 5926 Central. I enjoyed you all. Love you. Good night. Good night. Oh. 219. Uh, uh. 219 to talk. 219 to talk. 